I have been on a video crushing filming mega recording spree. So let's do one last video before it's absolutely pitch dark in here. And that is going to be the dilemmas of a book nerd tag. Hello book friends, welcome back to the channel. It's Alyssa, hello if you are new. I thought we'd do a cheeky little tag and then I'm gonna stop filming and maybe take a little nap because I actually have to go live in like four hours from right now. I don't know how, but I found this random book tag that I haven't seen a lot of on booktube and it's called the dilemmas of a book nerd tag and it was originally made by Lindsay's little library or at least i think it was so i will link that original video down below along with all the prompts etc and i will tag a few people of course in the comments down below and if you want to do it you can go ahead and do it but this was fun it's sort of just like talking about being a book nerd and the the things that we face that we all kind of commonly have to deal with while being a book nerd. So we're going to just hop right into it. Hopefully this will be a quick little fun little video. I'm trying to come up with some fun little things to have here during this holiday season since I couldn't do Vlogmas or anything like that because I didn't prepare for it. So we'll launch right in with the first dilemma, which is book storage. How do you store and organize your books? Obviously I have bookshelves, <laughs> you know this. Uh, there's also a whole corner of shelves over here and it, I have some shelves in my bedroom and I have a book case like a like a lawyer's case a library case downstairs uh, and I have books hanging on walls and Jesus has books in in the guest room we have books everywhere there are books all over this house there's even some bins of books in the garage we have a lot of books I store them however I can and the ones that are on shelves and things um books are generally organized in the house by sort of broadly speaking genre so the corner here is fantasy sci-fi corner so that's like sff corner which i thought would be enough space but it seems to be too small troubles of being a book tutor <laughs> um and then behind me is all of my like lit fic poetry all of that and actually down below is all of my like mystery thrillers are on the floor stacked up to the bottom shelf uh, those are almost all from my mother and I have not read like any of them and she just keeps giving them to me and one day I will have to read them but I sort of stopped reading mystery thrillers a while ago and I haven't gotten the bug to read them again but I might so I keep them. Uh, in my bedroom I probably keep a lot of my graphic novels and my manga and I don't have a ton of manga and romance and stuff like that and then downstairs in that bookcase I have all of my nonfiction. and then in piles all over up here I have books that need to be shelved I have bins of books that are on Pango I have stacks of books that I have to take pictures for for Pango but I'm never awake during the day so I never have the light to be able to take pictures for Pango so I have to figure out a way to take pictures that aren't filled with shadows in the middle of the night so I can start listing things on Pango so I can get rid of them and I did intend to I got up early it's three o'clock in the afternoon you would not know that because it's been dark pretty much through all of these videos that I've been filming because it's a dreary cold flurrying day in New York and I stayed up I have had like three hours of sleep guys so that I could film a bunch batch film a bunch of videos for you guys during the daylight Add this to the dilemma. Um, this is me at dilemma like 11 is trying to find time to film while there's daylight. So this is being done in the dark. So it's always dark. My life is just always darkness. I live in darkness. But anyway, dilemma number two, I'm getting off track. Tracking. How do you keep track of what you have read and what books you own? So this year, one of my goals for the year was to really stick to my reading spreadsheet. I've tried to keep a reading spreadsheet in the past and it has not gone well so I am really focused in on that so I'm doing really well I'm behind but not very much I'm mostly through November so I have to finish putting in November into the thing I, I get the Excel spreadsheet from hardback quarter I think that Ali does a fantastic 
spreadsheet. I love it. And I'm so glad last year was the first year that she charged for it. And I'm so glad that she charged for it because this girl puts in so much work to make this massive spreadsheet and she was giving away for free for years and she deserves to be paid for her time and her efforts. So I'm very happy to see that she's finally, um, charging for it, but I, I love it. It's, I don't use everything. And if I was better at using Google sheets, I would rank in it to make it like more what I want. And maybe one year I'll do that. But for year one, I'm just really trying really hard to stick to it. And I've done that. Uh, and one of the tabs on there is also a tab for your own books. And I have been very good at putting my books on there and cataloging most of my books. I have been scanning them into LibVib, but then I got behind and then what do you do with ARCs and the ARCs don't have barcodes and then it's a whole thing. So is everything on there? Not yet, but I've been adding to it. Um, as books come in, I put them on there I've, and trying to see how many of them I've read, which is about like 3% of the books that I own I've read, which is not great, but it could be worse, I guess. It's better than my NetGalley score. And there's still some more that needs to be cataloged and put in there, but I do enjoy having that catalog. It is helpful and it is eye-opening. One, to see how many books that I just get sent all the time. And then on top of that, what I do buy is I do thrift books. So I rarely ever go out and just buy like two books. I will spend $10 and get 20 books because <laughs> I am an avid book thrifter. That's how I keep track of stuff. I also track things on Storygraph. I don't really use Goodreads. Uh, I find Goodreads really annoying. Uh, it's clunky. I hate all the ads. I hate the whole website. It feels like it's back in like early 2000s. I really, really hate it. I used, I have been, I've been on Goodreads for years since essentially it came out. And in the last few years, I just, I couldn't, I do not like it. Um, yeah, so I use Storygraph. I think it's visually slicker and I it has all the features that I really require and I don't, I'm happy. So I use Storygraph. Dilemma number three, borrow. Do you lend your books out? Not really. I, I have two books that I lent to a coworker that then left the job and I now don't talk to her, not because of anything nefarious, but just we don't happen to talk anymore. So she has... <laughs> She has my copy of The Kiss Quotient and uh, Mr. Darcy Takes a Wife. And I would like my copy of Mr. Darcy Takes a Wife back, but I don't think I'm ever going to get it back. And then one of my girlfriends has my copy of The Bronze Horseman, which she's holding hostage until I go down and see her. And that's really my fault. So I should really just drive down to Pennsylvania to get my book because I have the dust jacket. I don't think anyone's ever noticed this. But the dust jacket for The Bronze Horseman has been sitting here for a long time because if I do loan out a book and it has a dust jacket, I, I will not... I will not send it with its dust jacket because I don't trust you people. And I don't think I'm going to loan books out anymore because there's no point. People don't return them. I don't, I, no more. I've learned my lesson. Thrice burned. Never doing it again. Dilemma number four, buying. How do you buy or acquire your books? I kind of talked about this. I get a lot of books sent to me from publishers. I get a lot of e-arcs. I get a lot of just arcs in general. I thrift a lot of books. I've had a lot of books. I've always had a lot of books. It's been a problem since I was tiny. Like as soon as I could read, ferocious reader. Uh, my grandmother was a librarian. Um, having a lot of books around is sort of always the norm in my life. Um, my mom has a lot of books. We all just read a lot. My dad was a big reader. Like books are important. So they're always around. I go to library book sales. I go to Pango. I'll use my Pango box to buy books, but predominantly I either thrift them or I get them sent to me from publishers or I already own them because I do own quite a few books if you haven't noticed. Dilemma number five, comments. How do you respond to the, how do you read so much comment or similar comments? Um, I made a whole video actually about this because uh, I really hate that there's this whole like competitive sort of reading thing that goes on and I hate seeing these videos and especially how well they do like how to read more how to read faster how to read x number of books in a year and the true like answer to all of this and the summary of that video if you don't want to go watch it is that to read more you must devote more time to reading in, at the end of the day even if you're reading faster at some point you still have to devote the time and the energy and make that your focus. I don't have children. My boyfriend's a gamer. I I game sometimes, but I predominantly read. We are very quiet, like isolated people. We like to do our things to de-stress. Uh, I I like audiobooks. I listen to books on my commute. Uh, I listen to books while I'm walking around because I don't like having just the silence and the noise in my head. So I listen to stories and 
it's a big part of my life in general and always has been in those quiet downtime moments to read and now that this is something that I do not necessarily as a job but as a monetized hobby um I I read a lot it just happens okay you have to put more time in you have to make it more of a priority in your life you're never gonna read a hundred plus books in a year by reading like an hour a week you know what I mean anyway that's kind of how I answer it is that this is all I do I don't watch tv I don't have kids I don't go anywhere I don't do anything I read I escape through books dilemma number six next book how do you pick your, pick your next read so I am an easily distracted mood kind of reader and not the mood kind of reader where like where you like fall out of being in the mood to read something I guess is what I'm trying to say but the mood kind of reader where like I will want to read certain things at certain times and some of it seasonal some of it is mental like I when I'm really stressed I find that I end up putting down more heavy books and I will pick up like romance or cozy fantasy or something like that and that makes me feel better but I also really don't like having just open-ended you can read anything this month kind of things because I get overwhelmed and I have like decision fatigue and I can't pick a book so I really like to make small like well they're usually pretty big like like a TBR um that's not a strict TBR but it's more like this is the pile of books I want to read from this month and they usually span a great variety of books and my mood throughout the month will usually move and change and I'll find things in that pile to read as my mood morphs and changes does that make any sense uh so that's kind of how you make my book it's based on what I want to read but I usually try to like compile my unread books down to like a smaller pile and then I pick something to, buy, to read but in recent months what I've wanted what I've been reading has come down to like what I have mistakenly agreed to buddy read um so I'll go into this when I do like my goals video later in the month but like I kind of want to get away from a little bit more of the distracting nature of community reading and not be so like quick to agree to like literally everybody read <laughs> dilemma number seven travel how do you pick your books or book to bring on vacation with you um I usually bring my kindle because then that gives me like a lot of choice and then um I'll bring whatever I'm currently reading and then I don't know it depends on where I'm going like if we're going somewhere like beachy and more like chill out relax hang out I might bring uh, a few books and they'll be a little bit lighter in nature and then if we're like flying a lot I might bring a couple bigger books and then whatever's on my kindle um and those might be heavier because maybe we're not going and sitting around like we're walking around places um more in like sightseeing and stuff like that as opposed to like hanging out on the beach or sitting by the pool and having a cocktail um but mostly it just follows my regular tbr and I just bring whatever I'm already going to read I don't usually make like special travel picks but definitely if I'm gonna like hang out by a pool I'm not gonna read like a little life <laughs> by the pool I'm gonna read something more like maybe commercial or contemporary or lighter in some nature some way it's lighter not as heavy as a topic or a density of writing or anything like that dilemma number eight annotate do you write or highlight or mark up your books in any way yes I do do I do everyone no but sometimes I just like need to interact more like I'm, I'm loving the book so much or I'm hating the book so much that I want to really in, like interact with it and then I'll start annotating and it's kind of why I love my kindle scribe so much because even when I'm reading a kindle book or an ebook I can I can still have that tactile writing and um interaction with it and then I, I usually have a much more involved and um deep experience with the book and so that I do annotate uh do I go back to them no but I do like when I reread a book and I have previously annotated it it's kind of fun to see your thoughts and add to them as, as you read again I do annotate I usually do things in pencil but sometimes I do them in like a black fine line felt tip pen 
Um, I don't highlight as often, but if that's what I have, I will highlight. I, I'm not, my books are not precious in that nature to me. Some books are, but not all. Dilemma number nine, new or backlist. Which do you prefer, new releases or backlist books? I do read a healthy mix between new and backlist. I think I prefer backlist in general because if you're a backlist book that has like stuck around and is still in print and people are still talking about it, it's usually got a lot of merit and I feel like a lot of the newer books and I feel like the internet likes to talk about this like this is something new and I don't think it's something new it's just every year there's so many books that get published and a lot of them are kind of more fluffy or like trash or they're just not good or like use whatever words you want to use and then there's the handful that are truly excellent and those are the books that will stick around on backlists for a long time that people will probably talk about and that will come up a lot and I yeah so I feel like I prefer backlist because it's sort of been vetted but I'll read either. And then finally, dilemma, dilemma number 10, sequels. Do you read a book as they are, do you read books as they're released or wait until an entire series is published before reading book one? I do read books as they're published. I obviously prefer when a series is complete, but I will read books as they're published. I just really hope that when I do that, that the books are actually published in some sort of close like, you know, sequence and not something like where you get years in between books because, you know, the author is deciding they're going to take their time to finish the last book in a series. If I'm waiting on like one book though, if a series is almost done, I'm much happier to like start it because usually by the time I finish it, they're the third book or the fifth book or whatever the final book is, is out. Yeah, definitely the preferences completed series but if I really want to read it, I will read it as it's going out because it's also kind of fun sometimes to discover a new fandom, read the books as they're coming out, and have that like first wave reaction with everybody else who's reading the books. But yeah, definitely the preferred method is to have the thing completed because it's just, it's so nice to bang through a completed series. But anyway. So that is the dilemmas of the book nerd tag. I'm going to tag some people below. I have to use my little noggin and think of who I want to tag. Otherwise, feel free to leave your answers to any of these in the comments if you'd like. If you don't make videos yourself or if I haven't tagged you or if you haven't tagged you and you want to do it, do it. Have fun. Anyway, that's it. Uh, I I need to, to, to do something that uh, isn't sitting in front of these lights. So thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video, whatever it may be, because it's my channel and I can do whatever I want. Bye. So just sit with me, talking to the night until the morning, building cat mystery. I don't think I ever want to go come closer next to me, trying to find another way to say this. Place.